What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 90. We start today's of stuff on the back of the absolutely massive loss to Inter Milan in the big game between the top two as our rivals took a six point lead in the race for the Serie A title with a draw for the Europa League round of 16. As you see Inter now going nine points clear after winning their game on the Saturday. As you can see we've got Athletic Bilbao in the last 16 of the Europa League. Look at that tie there. You see it. Liverpool versus Manchester United. Do you know what? I think it actually happened a few years ago in the Europa League. It might have been the quarter-final or the round of 16. I can't remember now but it's 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 very rare that those two teams will now meet in Europe nowadays. But it's it's so cool when it happens. You know, like a really iconic uh, English battle in the knockout stages of a Europa League or a Champions League. But even so, we've got Athletic Bilbao in the Europa League last 16. Our, uh, our our reward, if you will, for topping the group. So let's get through the prelimi uh, preliminary round and get a bye in that round. So yeah, it's going to be Athletic Bilbao in the last 16. And you'll see the league table and where they are. Right now, very soon, yeah, I feel very confident indeed that we're the favourites for that game. Still for the first game of today's episode on the back of the big loss to Inter Milan. Roma coming to take us on. Final game of February. And after the sickening defeat Simone Inzaghi's side, 3-1, I thought, okay, alright. We've now got nine points behind it. We could have been top. We could have been top to end the last episode. We're now nine points behind and they've got to get got the better head to head record as well. So if we're going to chip away, we've got to do it once again. We've done it before, we've got to do it again. So, Roma, first game of today's episode. Callum, Arsene Doyle's 10th of the season, gets us a goal up against Roma as we do take the lead. And 17 minutes in, still up by a goal. Roma trying to get back in the game here. Almost did so as well. Mike with a really good save, low down to his left, keeps us still at 1 0. But despite the chance there, we've been a better team in the first half. 36 minutes in, trying to double our lead, get us a two goal cushion, which I always say, never feel comfortable until I got it. Arsene Doyle rolls through Fernandez down the right hand side and I tell you as Getting gets uh, assist number five this season we mentioned him in the last episode when I talk about players that are transitioning in this team I always talk about Moyes Keane you know going from striker to left wing and how it's going to take seven years we all know it you know I keep on saying it but Getting Fernandez as well another assist there fifth of the season now he's he's so good in that right back role. I really can't tell why it's taken him so long to learn that position. But still, Roma in this game, to be fair, had quite a few chances. A great block by Santos there after Mike's good save kept it at 2 0. And now, two minutes to go, still up by two, looking for that third goal. I love this. You know, that one extra pass I keep on talking about? One extra pass, one extra pass, one extra pass. Always cool when it comes off. Leon Goretzka leading like a true leader should. Could have taken the ball on himself, but he said, you know what? I've got young, uh, you've got young, uh, young Duarte next to me here, the 23 year old Portuguese winger. Let me just, let me just stroke it across. Let me just roll it across to him. Let him get our third goal. Let him get his big moment and make it 3-0, which is exactly what he does. Duarte with our third, 3-0 the final score and a big win there against Roma in the game. Look at the stats there, to be fair. The scoreline, quite deceptive. As I always say, I present the highlights package very fairly. That was nowhere near as one-sided as the scoreline might have suggested. Some big saves by Mike and great defending from Santos made sure we got the three points. So the gap now cut to six. 12 games to go. Our following game, Salerno Natana away from home right after the Coppa Italia semi-final second leg against Fiorentina and they're rock bottom of the table. So I'm going to say it once again. We've done it before. We can do it again. We had to chip away at the major deficit we had at the start of the season when Inter Milan were flying. They were undefeated. No one could stop them. But we managed to get within one win away from going top just a couple of games ago heading into that Milan derby. There's no reason we can't do it again. You know, I'm not normally a very optimistic person, but I genuinely do believe we can do it once again. 12 games to go. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up on this title. Major, major blow against Inzaghi's side a couple of games to go, games ago. I'm not giving up, though. Absolutely not. There's still no reason why we can't catch them and win this Serie A title. However, as I've talked about it, the most winnable competition of the three is definitely this one. Coppa Italia, semi-final, second leg. Won the first leg at the San Siro. Now travelling to Tuscany, leading by a goal after 2-1 scoreline in the first leg get ourselves a clean sheet and we're going through to the Coppa Italia final but I'm not about defense on this AC Milan side you know it man I'm always going on the offensive and looking for our high powered offense to get us the goals to win us the games with these nine minutes in we had the first chance firing over but Gutierrez would give us the lead and extend the aggregate scoreline to a two goal cushion as he does his best Erling Haaland impression makes it 1-0 on the night in Florence and 3-1 over two legs and really right from the first whistle that was again my mentality even when I'm defending a lead over two legs and I know that a clean sheet will send 
send me through. I still feel as though attack is the best philosophy to go with. And when you've got one of the best strikers in world football, you'd be a fool not to utilise his offensive prowess. Roberto Gutierrez doubles the lead, bags his brace in 14 minutes as he smashes one in from range. And that was how the game would finish. You'd have seen by my lineup heading to the game. I rotated a large chunk of my team for this one, for the semi-final second leg, with a game in the Serie A against the Lernitana on the weekend. But I had to start Roberto Gutierrez. Of course, Gutierrez was going to start this game, no doubt about that. His brace ensures we go through to the Coppa Italia final, our first cup final of AC Milan. And who have we got in the final? <laughs> Is it any surprise? Inter Milan, Simone Inzaghi's side. That's actually the penultimate game of the domestic season. It comes the get. It comes on the Thursday night. I think it is Wednesday or Thursday night with the final Serie A game coming uh, on the weekend. So yeah, we got Inter Milan in the Coppa Italia final. They made it through Bologna, and as as we expected, when the semi final was drawn, us versus Fiorentina, Inter versus Bologna. Look, there was a chance that maybe those two teams could make it through and stun us both, but we were better. We were definitely firm favourites. So the top two teams in Italy this season, and we'll be meeting in the Coppa Italia final. I guess it's fitting. Still, 43rd game of today's episode. It was indeed Salernitana, right now rock bottom of the Serie A. So heading into this game, well, all I'll say is this. Slip up in this one, and I'll, I'll change my rhetoric from, we can still do it, to it's over. We had to win this one with ease. We had the first couple of chances, as you'd expect. I thought we actually had a goal robbed, if you will, early on. Moyes Keane strike from range off the other side of the crossbar. It looked as though he crossed the line. Evidently, the referee did not get a notification on his watch, so clearly the ball hadn't crossed the line. There was still a, uh, a white blade of grass that the ball must have touched there, so it was still 0-0, but we take the lead soon afterwards. Roberto Gutierrez giving us the advantage. And after Mike made a great save to keep us still leading by one, as Salernitana almost shocked us and found the leveller. Soon after that, Callum hudson Adoy gave us some breathing room and made it too. Even started to restart, still leading by two. And what was a pretty controlled performance here, away from home. Nine minutes through, it's a great through by Gutierrez. Finds Moise Keane, a chance to make it free, which he does as well. Such a weird finish, that one as well, because I was trying to bend it with the right foot. In the end, he looped it over the goalkeeper with the weaker left. It was really bizarre, totally unintentional. Hey, listen, we'll take it. Three in the final score against the Lernitana. Rock bottom of the Serie A. Of course, we expected to win that game. We come through with these with a very controlled victory as well. And you've seen the Fiorentina game and in this game as well. The possession stat was heavily in my favour for both of these games. And I think that that's one thing I might look to do a little bit more as we come towards the end of the season. Oftentimes, even when we win, I'll lose the possession battle. Um, against my opponents, but I think keeping hold of the ball, especially when I'm leading a game, might be a more beneficial thing to do. Seeing games out in a controlled manner, as opposed to going all out, gung-ho, full attack from the very first, which is the last. Because you've seen this season, we conceded quite a lot of late goals. Think about some of the, the points we dropped this season against uh, Venezia, for example, at San Siro uh, in stoppage time. You know, I think I think maybe had I not been so attack-minded in those sort of games, just continue to attack until the very last whistle, just put my foot on the ball, conserved energy. I might be able to see the game out with a different philosophy so I start doing that a bit more now you know instead of just always going on the offensive always looking for more goals knowing when to put your foot on the ball and take the sting out of the game you know but uh, still for the final game uh, sorry penultimate game of this episode Athletic Bilbao this would be the first leg away in Spain and you saw the lead table heading into the game the first leg of the round 16 clash in the Europa League right now 11th place in La Liga they're not having a great season so I thought heading into this one Right, okay. We are favourites. Let's make sure there's no doubt as to why that's the case. Early on, we would take the lead, and then 22 minutes in, we would double it. Sailmakers down the left-hand side, rolls it across, and Gutierrez right now. He is going for the golden boot in all three competitions. La Liga, Copa... Sorry, La Liga? Serie A, Copa Italia, and also the Europa League as well. He gets our second, he makes it two, and then six minutes for the break. What a ball through to Callum hudson Adoy. Gets inside his man, smashes one towards the far corner, and picks it out as well. Callum hudson Adoy, you think about our front four. Gutierrez is the star. You'd say Moise Keane is the, I was going to say right-hand man, I guess left-hand man if you're on the left-hand side. But Timmermans and hudson 
Hudson-Odoi, they still chip in with goals every now and then. And Hudson-Odoi here getting our third in what was a 3-0 victory. The job done before half-time. And again... Look at the possession stat. Another clean sheet notched up. That's now three straight for AC Milan. I think, I think I'm starting to be a little bit more intelligent now and starting to know when to put my foot on the ball, just conserve energy, take the sting out of the game, and just casually keep control. You know, I think sometimes I'm a little bit too, oh, let's get another goal. Let's dominate. Let's really put the swords in them. Sometimes you just got to know when to stop it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's all well and good, like, being the top scoring team in the Serie A. We've got that reputation. That's a fact. We're the best scoring team in the league right now. But again, sometimes you, you just need to know when to say, all right, we've done the job. Let's just hold on to the clean sheet, not the ball around, and make sure we don't give our opponents chances by throwing too many bodies forward. It's about being more intelligent. That's something I need to do, I think, between now in the end of the season so yeah following game uh, Venezia away in Venice really looking forward to this one here we take lead early through Roberto Gutierrez 26th goal in 28 games as he gives us the lead and in 23 minutes in well, this was pretty bizarre now Moyes Keane is up 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 and away and he's, he's celebrating the goal and I thought it was his goal I thought the ball had already crossed the line but as we see, the goal actually in the end goes down as an own goal from Davidovic, the centre-half wearing the armband, and it's 2 at AC Milan. I thought, now I must say, when I was playing this in real time, I thought the ball had already crossed the line, and that's why he smacked it into his own goal. But instead, I can't really, <laughs> I can't really work out why he did that. The ball clearly hadn't crossed the line. He must have thought he had already crossed it. Smacking the ball into his own goal. Really silly own goal. But listen, we'll take it. It's 2-0 Milan. And then 32 minutes in, it wasn't really going to matter. Leon Goretzka gets our third. What a U-turn for Leon Goretzka in this team now as a leader. As he makes it 3-0 AC Milan. And it's like the points are already in the bag before half-time. Venezia would get themselves back in the game four minutes before the break. Diakite firing one in from just inside the area as it's 3-1. But really, whilst you could call it a glimmer of hope, it was nothing other than a consolation. I knew that for sure, even before the half-time whistle. We've been in complete control, really, from the very first whistle. And then four minutes after the restart, Roberto Gutierrez attacks down left-hand side. Back heels to Keane. He whips one to the back stick. And oh my goodness gracious me, can you believe it's happened again? Keane celebrating the goal. But this one, there was no ambiguity about this one. It was definitely an own goal. But I was thinking, who headed it into the own goal? Because it happened so quickly, I didn't see it. I floated the ball to the back stick, aiming for Callum Hudson-Odoi and Menezes. And it was the same guy, it was Davidovic. Davidovic heads it past his own goalkeeper. It's not a great goalkeeper, let's be honest. But even so, it's two own goals by the same player in the same game. 4-1 the final score. Milan get a comfortable win in Venice. But I don't think I've ever seen that before. In all my years of playing FIFA career mode, I don't think I've ever seen a player score two own goals in the same game. Well, now I have Davidovic. He must be an AC Milan, a Milan fan. There's probably a Milan jersey underneath his Venezia top. But even so, two own goals, 4-1 the final score. And we cut the gap to six once again. Ten games to go. And like I said, we're chipping away. We're not giving up on that Serie A title. But that will end season. Stick around, guys. Big thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the please drop a like. Most of you all have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.